Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again in today's video. A bunch of corrupt city security officers raided my property and stole my guns. They claim they confiscated them for safety, but I am an ex-police officer and they are criminals. Here is what happened, let's dive right into the story. I will try to keep this as anonymous as possible since I don't live in the United States of America, but instead live in a smaller country and people might easily find out who I am if I use real names. My neighborhood used to be one of the best in the area, the people are lovely and everyone got along decently well. A select few of us along the street own firearms and by going online you can see which houses they are in. Some sort of law states that it's public right to know or what not. Anyway, I'm one of those people. Not only did I go through rigorous assessments to have the license, but I am also an ex-police officer, so for lack of better explanation, I basically just kept the gun I used from work and expanded my collection. I'm trusted within the community and a lot of my neighbors have come to me when they are having any sort of conflict as I'm a good peacemaker apparently. However, one month our mayor tragically died after suffering from a series of heart attacks. She was a great mayor genuinely caring for the people and listening to what they had to say. She was replaced by a woman named Josie who everyone quickly learned was in it for the wrong reasons. Nothing would ever get done first of all, complaints went nowhere, potholes remained unfilled, crime began rising. That last pointer was the one she decided to make the biggest fuss about, which is where this story begins. Her first act was to make a homeowner slash neighborly association group. That she was in charge of, of course, that came with a long list of rules that everyone had to adhere to. This new act was for everyone in the district, which unfortunately included my neighborhood as well. The first couple of rules were harmless enough, just things about the general upkeep of our houses, certain length the grass, types of flowers and plants we could and could not have, types of fences that were allowed, things like that, you catch my drift. They were certainly annoying and tedious, especially when it came to the brick colors, because lots of us had to repaint our whole houses, but they were not too bad overall. The worst came with the last rule on the list, no possession of firearms is permitted under any circumstance. There was uproar at this, it was our constitutional right to own one, especially if we went through all the paperwork and protocols to get the license. I had figured that the rule meant anyone without a license, but no, that was not the case. Mr. Trainer lives here, correct? A man in a smart uniform had knocked on my door. You are speaking to him, I said with a cautious smile. Are we correct in assuming that you are an owner of firearms, Mr. Trainer? The man questioned. Yes, you would be correct. Is there something I can help you with? I was beginning to see where this was going. Well, as I'm sure you are aware, there are new rules in place thanks to the new homeowners association. And you will be unable to continue having possession of said firearms. Well, I don't think so. It is my right in every way to be in possession of my guns. I have filled all the paperwork for each and every one of them. Unfortunately, that does not matter. We will be sending around a team tomorrow to collect them. And with that, he walked away. I was fuming and confused. They cannot just take them away, surely, and maybe if there was a national law or something they could, but otherwise no. I stayed at home the following day, waiting for their arrival, and when they did arrive, I was ready for confrontation. The firearms, sir. A different man came to the door with a metal box in his hands. No, I replied. What do you mean no? He questioned with a big sigh. I did not agree to giving up my firearms and there's nothing forcing me to. Sir, it's the new rule for the area. Is it in the law? I asked, staring him down. No, but I slammed the door on him before he could continue. I spent the rest of the day researching laws and homeowner associations to see if it was even legal to impose a rule like this. I did not really find much other than no they cannot do that, but also it has not happened before so there's little legislation on the matter. I did discover that a mayor and their personnel do have the right to restrict firearm access to someone in my country, but they must have a valid reason for doing so, which in this case they certainly did not. The following day I went to work like normal, my new job was nothing special, just some administration stuff in a warehouse. I was slightly wary of leaving my home with all the gun issues going on, I was not sure if they were gonna come knocking again. 
On my way home, I discovered that yes, yes they did come knocking, so I pulled my car into my driveway and walked up to my front door like normal. But just as I was about to put my key into the keyhole, I saw that it had been smashed. The handle was broken and the keyhole was smashed right through. I pushed the door open carefully, my heart was racing slightly but given it was still the middle of the day, I did not feel as scared as I would have if it were the night. Hello? I asked with no response. Before I went any further, I regained my senses and left my house, pulling out my phone and phoning the police. They arrived quickly and I explained what happened and one of the officers ended up being someone who used to be on my patrol, so that was a nice surprise. They entered my house and I followed them. After doing a good sweep of the building, they confirmed they were no longer there and lowered their guards. I knew the protocol, so next I started looking for what might be missing, while they took some evidence getting fingerprints and such where they could. I had a feeling what would be missing and so that was the first place I went. My guns. I kept them in a secure box under my stairs. The lock to this box was also broken in. I called the officers over and they quickly took prints from the lid of the box before opening it. It was empty except for a letter which confirmed who had taken them. By order of the mayor of my town, these firearms have been seized. I'm pretty sure she cannot do that, one of the officers remarked after reading the paper. My thoughts too, I replied, anger rising at the gal of that woman. After the evidence was taken, I got in the back of one of the cop cars and off we headed to the mayor's building. We walked through to reception and got into her office in a matter of minutes. Officers, what can I do for you? She asked, staring us down with an uncanny smile. You left this letter as evidence for your breaking and entering of this man's house. The officer I am familiar with stated putting the letter in front of her. Yes, I did. He had firearms that he was not allowed to have, so we took them. Well, nowhere does anything say he's not allowed to have them. He has all the correct paperwork. We looked over it ourselves, and the law states it is his right. Have you read the new homeowner association rules? She asked with a scoff. Yes, we have, and none of them can be upheld by the law. They are nothing more than suggestions, the officer replied. Excuse me? That is nonsense. It's everyone's responsibility to adhere to those rules. I will not have such a lie form in this office. Ma'am, calm down. We are here to get the guns back. Now where are they, and who signed off on the breaking and entering? You're not getting the guns back. It's illegal for him to have them. I made it so. She stood at this point getting red in the face. It's not illegal and I think you will find out that you'll be returning them. And as for the breaking and entering, you will be taken in for that. Jail time might be in order depending on the ruling. The officers were clearly getting agitated. In the blink of an eye, Josie had whipped out a gun from beneath her desk, pointing it straight at me. Before she could do anything, one of the officers had grabbed her arm, spun her and cuffed her. Well, you're certainly getting jail time now, attempting to assault an officer. I would never, I was pointing the gun at him. Yes ma'am, so assaulting an officer. Her face paled in realization, both of who I am and what she had done, and probably the consequences for said action. I could see as it registered with her the added time she would serve for breaking and entering into an ex-police officer's home as well as the attempted assault. You, this is all your fault, I will have you for this. The mayor screamed at me, her eyes practically bugging out of her head. I stayed silent, just shaking my head at her, a full investigation went underway and my guns were returned to me as well as the guns for all of my neighbors who suffered a similar fate. Josie ended up with many years behind iron bars and certainly she won't be allowed back in office anytime soon. And here ripe stars, I really hope for OP that he never has to deal with such a dangerous entitled Karen ever again. Either way, if you enjoyed the story, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post a comment because that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much and the next one is titled Physics Fight. I'm a paramedic and a few months ago we are coming back from a routine patient transfer when at an intersection about 4 blocks from the base I notice a woman sitting on the side of the road with her arms wrapped around herself and her head down. I nudge my partner who is driving and we flip on the lights and I see her head come up real fast and she looks terrified. I get out and she relaxes when she sees the ambulance. After I approach, I notice bruising on her wrists and other similar signs of domestic abuse. She seems hesitant to get up off the curb and into the ambulance, so I decided that I would at least pull the cot out of the back and give her something a little more comfortable than concrete to sit on. 
Now, a few important details. All the COTS in my service are striker-powered COTS. You've almost certainly seen these before. They are bright yellow with black handles and side panels. These COTS have a motor and battery built in to allow us to raise and lower the COT at the touch of a button, instead of throwing out our bags having to physically lift the COT up after loading someone. They are usually paired with an automatic loading system built into the ambulance that lifts the cot up to the right height to be pushed inside and also secures the cot when loaded. There is a little red tab at the end of the track just inside the doors that you press down to free the cot and allow it to slide out. When you press this tab it simply releases the cot and the loading carriage it's connected to and it's up to you to keep it under control until it reaches the unload position and locks into place again. This can be problematic because these cots weigh about 125 pounds, about 55 kilograms. As soon as I hit the release tab for the cot, I hear lights and sirens behind me. It's a city police car, which is weird because we had not yet requested police and we were outside the city in the sheriff's department jurisdiction. We merely informed dispatch that we were stopping to check on a woman at such and such intersection. The woman says something along the lines of Oh god he's here and moves faster than me seeing free food being distributed at base. She dashes past me and pretty much hurls herself into the ambulance sitting on the bench seat. The cop is approaching and he is pissed. I put two and two together and slam the ambulance doors shut. Let's call this officer police officer Steve or POS for short. POS is that Karen in there? Me, who? P.O.S. You know damn well who I'm talking about. Me, you mean my patient? I'm afraid I haven't gotten a name yet. P.O.S. Open those doors. I need to talk to her. Me, you're not using my rig as an interview room. You can talk to her at the hospital. We go back and forth like this for a few minutes and my partner at some point came back to see what the holdup was. But also overheard my stonewalling and went back to the cab to call our chief. I continue my routine of deny and delay until a pair of deputies, likely specifically requested for this by the chief, arrive. Oh good, now I have witnesses. See, we had stopped an upwards incline. I had hit the release tab on the cot and it wanted to slide back. I had to close the door so swiftly, I did not bother pushing the cot back against the stops and locking it in place. Emboldened by the presence of two deputies, he gets in my face. Get out of my way or I'm gonna have you charged with obstruction. Okay, I step out of his way and he opens the double doors. Between the cot, the monitor and the jump bag, I would say there was probably close to 160 pounds contained by those doors. All of which comes barreling out and hits POS square in the chest. He goes backwards and falls on his ass. One of the deputies laughs out loud, the other one walks up and kneels down beside the guy. He says, your shift captain is gonna be here in five, I wouldn't be here if I were you. POS gathers himself up and scowls at me and then stomps off. There's a limited amount that I can say about the aftermath as the trial is not settled yet, but we all know how well charges stick to cops. The woman is now living elsewhere and the cop is still a cop and I've been getting pulled over at least twice a week ever since then. But the video footage of him getting body checked by that cot remains one of the best things I've ever seen. And the next one is an am I the a hold story. My husband and I have a 15 year old son who is biracial, my husband is African American and I am white. This will be important later on in the story. My son just got his driver's permit and has begun driving with me on a regular basis. The other day we were on the road and he accidentally cut off a truck, making him have to brake abruptly. I scolded my son and gave a sorry wave to the driver and the next red light which came about a minute later the guy pulled up next to us. His car had a large company logo on it indicating he was on the job. He rolled down the window and shouted the N word at my son. My son's face went pale and he was quiet, depressed and clearly wounded deeply the rest of the drive home. The encounter sickened me. I did some research on the company and at one point I even plugged them into Facebook. They have a very active Facebook page and seem like an organization that prides themselves on a good image and good customer service. I called the company and reported the man's behavior, describing him very vividly. They informed me that they knew exactly who I was talking about and that all their drivers drive with a dash cam, so his behavior is on camera. I had a good feeling about the encounter and that they were going to definitely take care of the situation. Two months later when I was browsing Facebook kind of boredly one day, the company's name was recommended in my search and just for the hell of it I clicked and looked at their page for the first time in two months. 
One of the very first photos and posts I saw from just a day ago showed a big group of their employees huddled together in their company yard with some kind of tag about a project they just completed. To my horror, I saw the employee who shouted at my son in the group grinning widely, meaning that they did not fire him. The company is part of a nationwide chain, so I called their corporate headquarters, was connected to the highest person I could get to, and I reported the incident to them and complained about how they did not fire him. The man I spoke to sounded disgusted, way way more so than the previous person I had reported him to, apologized profusely and thanked me very much for telling him. Additionally, he made multiple statements about how racists and bigots have no place and no future in his company. Giving me a strong feeling the offending employee's career is now toast. Was it right of me to double report this guy? I'm sure he was given at least some consequence the first time around, if not fired, and I wonder if some might argue that I was going too far or being vindictive by reporting him again. Am I an a-hole or a Karen for not dropping this matter? And here, ripe stars, let me know in the comments what do you think about this. I would say that OP absolutely did the right thing and simply put, there should be consequences for things you say, especially while you are doing your job. Anyway, comment number one, not the a-hole, the dude deserves worse than losing his job for using that kind of racist language with a child. Good on you, I hope his life is hell. Comment number two, not the a-hole, he had no right to call your son the n-word, your son did absolutely nothing wrong and there's nothing that should be tolerated about a person throwing racial slurs out of thin air. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. Just so things make sense for everybody, I wanna explain how my family looks like. I am Afro-Latina and very dark skin, I married a white Irish guy and together we have two wonderful kids. Both of them are just as white as my husband and seem to not get much of my skin tone. I of course don't care what they look like because they are my kids and I love them more than anything. Now, of course I get a lot of weird looks from people and obviously Karens have nasty comments to say. Mostly things like people thinking I am their nanny instead of their mom and things that hurt more than anything else. This one Karen I came across while shopping though takes the cake over all the others that I have come across before. And by the way, ripe stars, I assure you, this story was not posted 30, 40, 50 years ago, but instead it's actually quite a new story from a few years ago. Either way, I was taking my kids shopping for some back-to-school clothes because, as any parent knows, they are not able to fit into anything from the previous year at young ages. So, one was going into second grade and the other was starting fifth. We were at a department store and at the moment we're getting them both new shoes. Karen then shows up and sees me trying to find a pair of shoes for my youngest one to like. She is picky and I know when I see a pair with pink laces, she will love them. I bring them back over to her and ask her if she likes the shoes and wants to try them on for me. I did not even notice Karen until she invaded my personal bubble and was hovering over me. Karen, what do you think you're doing to that kid? Me, I'm trying to buy her shoes. Can you back out of my face? Karen to my daughter, sweetie, take my hand and come with me right now. We will find your mommy and get you away from this bad lady. Me, don't you dare talk to my daughter. I'm her mother and I'm telling you that you better not lay a single hand on her. I might have jumped the gun into angry, but she had awoken a mama bear that has been cranky and dragging two young kids around all day to buy clothes that they don't care about. Karen, help security help, this woman is trying to kidnap these poor children. This got everyone's attention and I knew that I couldn't just take my kids and walk away without looking very suspicious. Security came pretty fast and before I knew it, I was being questioned and told to wait until the police arrived. My kids were scared and my youngest started crying because she saw her mother being dragged away from her. I was lucky enough for the police to arrive fast and I saw one officer go to the children while the other went to me. I don't know what he was asking them, but I did hear mentions of them asking my oldest if he knew where his mom was. Officer, so this woman claims you walked up to these two unaccompanied children and tried to lure one away by offering her shoes. Me, I know that to people like her it might not seem like it, but these are my children. Officer, do you have any proof that you can back up those claims? I have no idea what this guy was expecting me to have on a shopping trip. I did not exactly carry around their birth certificates. Obviously, I had my ID on me and that was pretty much it. I gave that to him and told him that I did not carry around paperwork showing proof that they were my kids. Me, I have the stretch marks to show that I carried them and I have a ton of photos in my phone of all of us. You can even see in one how pale their dad is. Officer, we still need to get this straightened out. Kidnapping is a very serious charge and you could end up in jail for even attempting it. 
This guy was just not listening to me and things did not seem to be going my way until Officer 2, who had been speaking with my children, appeared. He was black too and seemed a little bit more aware that a family like mine can exist. My kids were telling him of course that I was their mom and he was more than willing to look at photos of the family and take that as proof. Now, though the tables had been turned and focus was on Karen for starting this entire thing with no actual reasoning. I heard them questioning why she had called them about me kidnapping when they were my own kids. She started with a story of how my son had come up to her asking for help because a strange lady had been following them. I think she got a glance of them running up and hugging me though, which finally caused her true racist nature to come out. She started going on this rant that was so bad I had my kids cover their ears the best they could. The first thing she did was starting by calling me dirty and every slur she could think of, she clearly thought that my race should not raise white-skinned kids and had no issues saying it. You can imagine the black officer did not like hearing her racist comments and warned her to calm down and to stop. She just doubled down though, saying that people like me should not exist and that if she could she would kill me for trying to raise children that should be raised by people like her. And well, ripe stars, I would say here that people like her, aka people like Karen, the only thing that she should be raising is rats and maybe that is unfair towards the rats. Because not even rats deserve to be raised by a person like this. But Mrs. Karen was not finished yet. She was in total rage, I could swear her mouth was foaming. But I might have imagined that and she started to ball her fists and let out a high-pitched scream. She then started to lunge at me and my kids and slapped my face and violently tried to drag my kid away. Anyway, essentially saying that only white parents should raise white-skinned kids. This was enough for the police to arrest her and she was in big trouble. They told her that calling the police for something like this was erroneous and the mayor was apparently trying to cut down on situations like this. The other thing is you kind of cannot just go on a racist rant saying that you want to take somebody's kids away from them because of their skin color. They took her out of the store in handcuffs and the crowd of people that had been watching were slowly starting to go back to their shopping. Both of my kids were very upset and honestly, I was too. We decided that the shoes could be bought another day and we should do something more important instead. Go out for ice cream. They were of course confused and wanted to know what happened. We raise our kids to be open-minded and accepting of everybody, but they never saw the racist side of the world really yet. I tried to explain the best I could that since they look like their daddy, some people like Karen don't believe that I am their mother. I know that there will be more Karens anywhere I go with my kids because of what my family looks like, comments of thinking that they are from a previous marriage of my husband's or that I adopted them. Families look like a lot of things and while people can think anything they want, don't call the police because of it. If you do, then you might end up just like Karen being dragged out of a store because you refuse to accept other kinds of people. And with this, we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.